Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today I will be talking, um, expanding further on a topic I just spoken recently with respect to in, um, imputing income based on gifts. Um, and what I, I mean by that is more specifically around, um, you know, whether or not income can be imputed to you based on you know, regular gifts that you receive from your parents or grandparents during a relationship, whether it's during the marriage or or in a, a common law relationship. Uh, you know, conceptually, if you if you have support obligations when your relationship ends, so say child and or spousal support, your income is critically important, right? That's how the amount that you you have to pay in support is determined, and so. Um, you know, if you're intentionally underemployed, for example, obviously the, the the person who's looking looking to receive support from you is going to be looking at how you're funding your lifestyle and would be seeking to input income to you on those um, on those grounds. Or, or, or and if it's gifts, then obviously they're looking to imp impute those gifts you receive from your parents as income to you. But there's even cases where you may be intentionally underemployed in the recipient's. Um, opinion. So you might have, have a job and I'm just going to paint, you know, a very simple example. Say you have a job and you're, you know, you're netting $30,000 every year, but you have a lifestyle that's about $70,000 and that shortfall is covered by gifts um, from your parents. The other side has an argument that, you know, an additional amount of income, I'm just going to say 70,000 in this case, being imputed to you because you know, based on your lifestyle and whatever, that that's the income that should be applicable and not just your employment income. So um, does this mean the fact that the other side is asking for it doesn't necessarily mean it's a done deal and it has to, to happen. It is determined, you know, case by case. So it's very, it's, it depends on the facts in your case, but it is possible to have income imputed based on gifts that you're receiving from family in this in this way and um i think the main distinction and the different factors obviously that a court would look at to see if it's appropriate in the circumstances but the regularity of the gift is um you know determining factor um largely because you know, if you get gifts once in a while and it's just, you know, a birthday gift, I mean, we all, well, I shouldn't say we all, but a lot of people have um, parents and grandparents that would give them cash gifts, for example, during, you know, holidays and, and birthdays and things like that. So those may not necessarily um, be appropriate to be imputed as income because they're not, they're not regular, they're one-off um, gifts. But if it's uh, if it's something that happens fairly frequently, and it doesn't by fairly frequent it doesn't mean it has to be a monthly allowance. It could just be, you know, cash. It could be large cash gifts that are given from time to time that actually form part of your household budget and how household expenses are met. So the courts would look at this on a case by case basis in determining. Um, whether or not it's appropriate. So I'm, I'm just looking at a couple of cases and the factors that, you know, the courts look at, as I already mentioned, the regularity of the gifts, right? So if it's something that you just get um, on, spe on special occasions, that in and of itself might not um, be enough to support a claim that income should be imputed to you. The duration of the, of, um, you know, these gifts as well. So if you went through a hard time at some point and you know for a few months you had family support and they're, they're gifting you these monies that might not be enough but if you know there's people who have years of having family subsidize their their lifestyle that is likely a case where imputing income might be appropriate then are, are the gifts if the gifts are part of the family's income during the period of cohabitation and Sort of what I've been saying, because the longer a person, um, the longer you receive the gift, the greater the chances are that it's formed part of your family budget and it's now entrenched in your in your lifestyle. Then, I mean, in that case, then you might really be exposing yourself to income being imputed to you because it's now formed um, part of your lifestyle. And um, the circumstances of the gifts that earmark them as exceptional. So. You know, if you have 
a one-time situation, can't meet up your bills, and a parent gives you that extra bit of money to make things work for you, that it, that may not be enough to have income imputed to you. However, if again, it's something that happens for no particular reason. I've talked about birthdays. I've talked about holidays. Those are exceptional times. There's special occasions. That's fine. But if it's something that you are getting um, often um, and it's not exceptional, it's just kind of routine, then that might be um you know, considered income um, and, and it could be imputed to you. Um, and another factor is whether the gifts do more than provide a basic standard of living. Another factor is that the income generated by the gifts, what's, what's the um, income generated by the gifts in proportion to the um, payor's entire income? If it's paid to support an adult child through a crisis or you know, a, a period of disability, again, going, I had spoken about the length of, um, you know, receiving these monies, is the, are the gifts likely to continue? And what's the true purpose and nature of the gift? So um, these are, you know, some of the factors that the courts will consider in making that decision on whether or not income should be imputed to the recipient of gifts for the purpose of calculating what their support obligations would be. And um, I looked at a couple of cases and I just wanted to talk about one where um, income was not imputed and another where it was. So in one of the cases, um, the, there was an, it was a child support case and based on the respondent's lifestyle and the gifts that he received from his father, the, the courts, you know, refused to impute income in that case because they said the respondent had a chronic disorder that resulted in his inability to maintain employment. So because the respondent was unable to um, maintain employment, the respondent's father provided him with a monthly allowance to cover day-to-day -day needs and, uh, and pay for medical bills as well as budget property for him to use to motivate him to be self-sufficient. The court in this case affirmed um, the trial court's decision and dismissed the um, wife's motion, stating that the husband really had no entitlement to a stream of income from the father and that the gifts were intended only to encourage the husband's self-sufficiency sufficiency, and they were more in the nature of support for an adult child than an allowance and that they did not provide the respondent with an extravagant lifestyle. So you see how we kind of ties into all the factors that I had just mentioned. Now, in the other case, um, where the parties were married for 21 years and they had two children and throughout the marriage, the um, husband had, um, the husband's parents assisted the parties financially, including helping pay for their matrimonial home. Um, the husband was gifted money to start a couple of businesses. He had, um, it was gifted money to pay for the children's camp and private school expenses, as well as the husband's legal fees. In this case, um, the court determined that um, for child and spousal support calculations, that income based on these gifts received should be imputed to him. And again, this was um, upheld that by the Court of Appeal, and they found that it was appropriate for, for the trial judge to have done this, taking into consideration you know, all of the circumstances of, of that case, as, as I, I mentioned, you know, that allowed them to maintain, obviously, a lifestyle that was um, above average. It um, And it, it was something that happened for an extended period of time. So the court said the gifts were substantial in size. It was provided regularly and, and on an ongoing basis. So the court stated that the gifts helped the husband establish a lifestyle well above a basic standard of living for himself and for his family during the marriage. So there you go. You have the factors now. You've seen two cases where these have been applied and the outcomes. So the takeaway for you is, you know, Courts are likely to impute um, gifts as income if the gifts are significant, if they're provided on a regular basis, and if they have the effect of um, entrenching a lifestyle which is above a basic standard of living. So 
I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like it. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we post more um, new and more helpful videos uh, as we go along. Until next time, it's bye for now.